wanted to be a judge who knows just what is right and wrong and be good and be strong and on my swan up in the air I'm flying searching for justice can't you see me trying right is But because I am a good liar, I know what we can do. Let's hear the judge. Yes, because only our friend Klaus can solve it. I hear the wisdom coming from the gnomes now. And all together we have got the know-how. Because we are people of peace. That was only because the bird gave me away. Now, let's see the two of you attempt this one. <laughs> Danny, aren't you a bit old to be acting like such a youngster? Danny, will you dance something for us, please? Please! Come on, Danny, dance for us, won't you please? All right, children, if it makes you happy, I'll go ahead and dance for you. But I'll need something with a lot of rhythm. Got it. Children, you must have been practicing. Do you really think I can concentrate with you two making so much commotion? Yes, true. Klaus, here goes the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Oh dear, a letter from Tyrol. No kidding. Everything <laughs> okay? Is it from Killian? Yes, and he says he'd be very grateful if I could go there and lend a hand. He's got a slew of cases in which he could use assistance. Well, there's that call of the gnomes. But what can we do when we have so much work that needs to be done here at home? Yeah, especially you who spend most of your time dancing and playing with those two children. Well, yeah, but when I am working, I'm sure a handy little helper, don't you think so? Instead of flattering yourself, Danny, you better make sure that most of the plans for the Can journey we go are. With you? Huh? We promise if you take us to Austria, we'll be very good. My dear children, now that won't work at all, because you see, this is the judge's business trip. Hmm. Well, let's make a deal then. You must promise to bring both of us a nice souvenir from Austria. Yeah, something special! Hmm. All right, how about this? I promise if you two promise to behave while we two are away. Deal! Okay. Well, there you have it, children. Now, if you don't mind, Danny and I need to be alone to take care of some matters concerning our trip to Austria. All right, bye-bye. Do you hear that music, Danny? <laughs> sure Ooh. do.
Und Leo. <laughs> My friend Klaus. Dear Killy. <laughs> On behalf of all the Tyrolians, let me welcome you. Mm. Ah, my dear friend Killian, we are very happy to be here in the Alps with you again. Please come along to my home. The long journey must have left both of you very tired and very hungry. It's a lovely home you have here, Killian. Goodness knows it's been a long time. I would have liked to have held the trial here, Klaus, but because of extenuating circumstances, it is impossible. Why impossible? Because the very first case on our agenda is the one of the ducks against the deer. And naturally, we cannot fit a gigantic deer into a house as tiny as this one. Hey, could we make it an outdoor trial? How about that? Mm-hmm. And that way, all the animals will be able to attend, and I may even wind up with a tan. That's splendid. And now both of you should go up and get some rest. You must be very tired. I'll wake you up. Yes, you're absolutely right. We are a little tired from our trip, and tomorrow we have a very busy day ahead of us, so you better get some rest as well, my friend. That's a fine suggestion. Schlitzweitz. My dear friends, if I may have your attention, this court will come to order. Danny, may we have the first case, please? Yes, Your Honor. The first case is the complaint of the ducks against the deer. Perhaps the Ducks Council should begin the day's testimony. Hmm. Thank you, Your Lordship, for the opportunity. Let's hear your argument, please. This is the problem, Your Lordship. The ducks that I represent live and nest on a beautiful island in between the banks of the river. The males and females swim in couples and play like lovers. They swim towards the shore and under the shadow of a tree. The female begins to build her nest. When breeding time comes, the female ducks prepare their nest for laying, also sacrificing their breast feathers for it. And it is during this time that each female duck lays but one egg each day. Very interesting. Let's proceed. Of course, Your Honor. The ducks whom I'm quite honored to defend today take very good care of the future ducklings. Isn't that correct? Order in the court, folks. Please be quiet. As I was saying, Your Lordship, the parents take great care of the eggs. They wait to hear noises from inside the eggshells, which are a sign that the ducklings are soon going to be born. However, their happiness almost turned to tragedy this spring. All of a sudden, they heard a great noise. Before they knew it, the river rushed forth, flooding the small island, casting the tiny nests afloat. In an attempt to save them, risking their own lives, their parents followed. Yes. And who's the guilty party? The deer, your lordship. They live further upriver, and in their search for fresh grass, they dislodge heavy rocks, which then end up in the river, creating some sort of a dam, thereby affecting the water's current. And so, Your Lordship, the flow of the river narrowed until it suddenly broke the dam, creating the horrible nightmare that rushed downstream. <laughs> Flying upstream, the ducks witnessed the obstruction that the deer had created, the dam that eventually flooded the island. The deer saw the ducks, but they thought they were just saying hello. They were totally unaware of the terrible tragedy they had created. Are you through with your argument? Yes, Your Lordship. Very well. Who represents the deer? Your Honor, I am their counsel. I do, sir. It's your turn to speak up. What evidence do you have to enter for the defendants? Your Honor, as you very well heard from my colleague, my defendants didn't do it on purpose. What has happened in this case is the result of some unforeseen extenuating circumstances. There are some hardships. Allow me please, Your Honor. The deer and the other animals can't find food because the snow covers everything. During the winter, it is all they can do just to survive. So when spring comes, everything changes, and the deer can find some food at last. To get to the grass, they kick aside the stones. They had no idea the effect the stones would have when piling into the water. And that's all there is to it. Yes, they are guilty, but they meant no harm to anyone, Your Honor. Very well. Now I'll give you my verdict. Are you ready, Danny? 
Yes, Your Honor, you bet. I'm ready. <clears throat> As per the ducks. You must build your nests in safer places, away from the shoreline and much further upstream, where you needn't be worried about being disturbed by turbulent waters, no matter how high they may reach. Don't you see? Don't you worry, Your Lordship. They will do everything as you say. Fortunately, we're still very early in the season. Ah, yes. I'm afraid I don't understand. I was just thinking that there's still plenty of time to lay more eggs and have more ducklings. You're absolutely right, Your Honor, isn't he? <laughs> and here is my sentence to all the deer. Because they caused a disaster without them knowing it... That is correct. All they wanted was to find some food, Your Honor. I order them to be more careful with the stones in the process of looking for their food. In addition, they should become mother's helpers. I am sorry, but I don't think I understand. It's very simple. Each deer will take care of a nest and its respective eggs until the shells break and the little ducklings are born. Are you still following? <coughs> very well. You will protect them from the dangers of Mother Nature and from the dangers posed by other creatures. Your Honor, they will all obey with pleasure. I will completely assure you of that. Good. Then that is the end of all our problems. Danny, do you have the verdict to be signed? Here it yeah. is, Your Honor. Aha! What a beautiful drawing. Oh. Well, Your Honor, I couldn't resist. They're very pretty. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Order in the court. We must go on to case number two of the agenda. Go ahead, Danny. The next case is the dilemma of the ice rink. Klaus, before we start, I'd like to say something. The circumstance that I'm about to submit will probably bore the animals to death. It is of no interest to them whatsoever. It's something that only concerns us gnomes. If they get bored, they're free to go. What is wrong, Killian? Well, it's about our famous skating championship. All the animals of the forest have seen it. They've even enjoyed it with us. We've had so much fun together, but unfortunately, during the past few years, it has turned into a female-only competition. Men don't want to know anything about it. Yay! We have, however, a great female champion, a very beautiful girl called Greta. <laughs> There is only one male contestant. His name is Bruno, who is already 390 years old and, of course, has become very clumsy. While he may be old, he is determined. See, the problem is that when Bruno stops skating, the fine tradition of Tyrolean figure skating will end. What about young boys? They just want to play hockey. They say figure skating is only for girls. But hockey's a lot of fun. I agree with you, Danny, but figure skating is also fun. Why can't they be involved in both? Mm, you got a point there. What the? <gasps> oh. <laughs> She has just told me that something very serious has happened. An antelope has gone and fallen into a deep pit over in Dachstein. Oh, I hope it's all right. Oh, my goodness, those pits are very dangerous. Some of them are as deep as 300 feet. Please, Klaus, you must tell us what we can do to assist you. We'll do our job. Killian, there is no choice except to suspend the trial. For as gnomes, we must always save the creatures whose safety is dependent upon us. It's off to Dachstein to save the antelope. That's correct, and we can certainly save a great deal of time with Henry's help. <coughs> Splendid. With Henry taking us, we'll be there in no time. Killian, would you please be kind enough to show us the way? But of course, Klaus. I'll be happy to do anything I can to help. The view of this valley surrounded by those mighty hillsides is truly a wondrous sight, Killian. Our land is full of great contrasts. We have from very green valleys to very white mountains, as you can see there. Those mountains we're going to, is that what you call it? Darkstein, and their majesty is breathtaking, isn't it? My, just look at all the dark clouds, Killian. It is going to rain. We mustn't lose that swallow. Don't worry, Henry won't lose her. He's got as good a sense of direction as that swallow. Uh, 
Thanks for coming. Can you tell me where the antelope has fallen? Very far from here, way up on top of those mountains. I suppose you've prepared a rescue team already. Yes, everything's being organized. They're getting ropes, police, medical help, everything that is necessary. We'll be ready to go. That's terrific. Still, we have to act a little more quickly if we want to save the poor creature. All right, everybody. Let's get a move on, Henry. Klaus thinks that if we intend to use the skis, it'll take us too much time to reach the top. And what do you suggest, Klaus? It seems to me that a very simple solution would be that instead of taking the skis, you found a way to fly the same way we do with Henry, see? Because we don't have a swan that can take all of us there, you see? Well, you can use the ducks. That's what they're here for. Sure isn't going to be an easy job, Killian. Okay, throw me the rope. Well, are you ready, Doctor? Yes, Killian, I'm coming, I'm coming. I can't see the antelope yet. This pit is deeper than I thought. Ooh, I can see we're gonna have a little trouble keeping the poor animal from hitting against the rocks while we're getting him up. Don't worry, we'll be able to do it. The antelope will be just fine, lad. We're reaching the bottom, Klaus. I think I see the antelope. Fortunately, it doesn't have any broken bones. Just a slight sprain is all. The others are going to be very happy to hear that. I don't think it fell directly to the bottom. I think it hit some rocks on the walls of the pit that softened its fall. It has a number of wounds all over the body that must hurt a lot, but I can't find anything that's really serious. I'll wrap its leg now for protection. And I'll give it arnica herbs to kill the pain. That will do. Doctor, we're ready when you are. The antelope is all tied up with the rope. Should I go ahead and give the signal to the others? Yes, Danny, please go ahead and give them the signal. I'm finished here. <laughs> all right, Evo! be painful and if it moves it'll be dangerous for us oh no oh. Hey. something is happening men hold on to the rope are you all right danny just talk to me or try to yell danny i'm okay Thank goodness, I thought you'd fallen to the very bottom of the hole. Fortunately, he's very agile. You can say that again. <laughs> the danger is over for now, men. Continue to pull. I see them now. Pull on, my friends. Be careful. Be careful! Pull gently and pay attention to my signal! Put it down now, Hulk! Oh. 
Klaus, we've done it again. Thank you all, my friends. The antelope is recovering nicely, and in a very few days, it will feel like new. It won't need us anymore. Doctor, I'm very thankful. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care now. <laughs> All aboard. <laughs> Hang on to your hats. So, is the reason you gathered us together today because you already have the solution to our skating problem? Don't ask me, Killian. You should ask Danny. <laughs> well, Danny, what is it? You better ask the judge, hmm? I'd rather not tell you yet. Wow, what a wonderful idea. Couldn't I just have a hint about what you're talking about? Well, you look so intrigued that I will tell you. Somebody has to break the ice, and that person will be Danny. To break the ice? What are you talking about, Klaus? We just built that rink with our own hands, and the surface is perfect like a mirror. When I said to break the ice, I meant that if somebody starts, the others will follow. Oh! I never knew Danny had such dexterity. That's the card I had up my sleeve to play, my friend. <laughs> Look, Klaus, they make a beautiful couple. Mm. Now, ready? Up you go! You've done it again, Klaus, my dear friend. Do you realize you just invented figure skating for couples? We should get everyone on the rink, including us, my friend. What are we standing around here waiting for? First of all, I want to thank you for everything you've done for us. Now let's teach them something. <laughs> Norma is very upset because the trolls have stolen her recipe book. To help their friend, Klaus and Danny decide to go after the trolls. Their path leads them to Nepal. There, we'll meet the Zerpa gnomes and the horrifying snowmen. Will our friends be able to recover Norma's cookbook from the trolls' greedy clutches? Watch our next exciting episode and find out! Keep on